it is currently like seven o'clock in the morning and me and Mackenzie are getting ready to head up to my church for a youth event we're having a yard sale but I actually have something going on this afternoon so I'll probably leave around like 11 or 12 o'clock but yeah we are gonna go do this yard sale and then I think I'm going to Starkville for Super Bulldog weekend to go watch Mississippi State's uh, spring football game so that should be pretty fun but yeah this yard sale is to help fund for a youth trip that we're going on uh, where we're gonna do some uh, I guess mission work and the youth will be able to just really connect with God on a deeper level more so I think than they probably ever have because I don't think our youth has really done anything quite like what we're doing so I think it's gonna be very good and I'm stoked for it time to get to work Working. <laughs> You're like a turtle. Y'all got cooking going on in here. Oh, don't take a picture. Take one of Miss Big. Oh, you don't want one of me. Y'all are the sweet ladies doing all the cooking back here. Okay, guys, so I just left the church and dropped my sister back off at the house, and now I'm heading to Start Vegas. So it should be pretty fun. It's going to be cool to be able to see some of the new recruits and see what our team's going to be looking like this year. Unfortunately, though, I'm going to miss this football season since I'll be going on the mission trip. So I guess I'll just have to get feedback from my parents about how we did. But I figured since I will be missing this football season, why not just go to the spring game and enjoy that. So anyways, I've got a long drive ahead of me, but I will meet y'all in Starkville. Okay, so I just got to Starkville and found a place to park. Now I'm walking towards the stadium to get ready for the game. I'm here a little bit early, so I guess I'll enjoy some food and maybe meet some people and just enjoy the atmosphere.
Okay guys, so I just got home from Starkville and I had a pretty good time. Yes, I did go alone, but I met some pretty cool people. I enjoyed watching the football game and just being in the atmosphere. I always love going and supporting my Bulldogs. Afterwards, whenever I went to Buffalo Wild Wings, I met this dude from Arkansas that was there for the Mississippi State and Arkansas Baseball Series. So we just sat and watched the game and enjoyed each other's company. But it was really awesome because not only did I get to see a fun football game, but I got to go to Buffalo Wild Wings and watch Mississippi State in the second baseball game, and they ended up sweeping Arkansas in the series. So all in all, it was a pretty good day. But now that I'm home, I'm getting ready to go to bed, so I will see y'all tomorrow. Okay guys, it's time for the lesson of the day. So today's lesson came to me just very unannounced but it came to me so easily and it was so simple to understand. I was trying to think about what I would talk about and it just came to me without me even having to really do any research or anything. And it's funny how God works in these ways, but this is gonna sound crazy. He actually spoke to me through Beatles. And no, not the band, I'm talking about actual Beatles. So by now, I'm sure you're totally confused and wondering how the heck did God speak to me through Beatles. So let me just set the stage for you. So today I was going on a run, just trying to get back in shape because I've been letting myself go and haven't been focusing on taking care of my body like I should. So I got back from my run and I was sitting outside on the porch, just taking a second to catch my breath before I went inside. And as I was sitting there, I was just thinking about, okay, what am I going to talk about? What lesson am I going to provide for you guys? And at the moment, I figured I would just revisit the procrastination topic. So the topic that ended up coming to mind was showing mercy. So let's revisit the Beatles. So as I was sitting there on our porch swing, I was just kind of taking in what was around me and just enjoying the outdoors and the pretty day. And I looked down on the ground and saw a beetle laying on its back and it was trying to roll over. I don't know how, but for whatever reason, it was injured and it couldn't get back over off of its back. And I don't know why my mind went to this, but I kind of felt sympathetic for the beetle because its whole existence was just turned upside down and it could do nothing with its life. The thought crossed my mind, should I just stomp on it and kill it? But for whatever reason, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I wanted to be able to see the beetle, I don't know, I guess be able to make it. I know this all sounds weird, but please bear with me. The story gets better and I'm gonna tie it all in together. So yeah, this beetle was just struggling to get off his back and instead of killing it, I decided that I would help it. So I used my foot to flip the beetle back over on its front side. I figured if I flipped them over that he'd be able to walk off and be perfectly fine. But I was wrong. You see, because of his injury, he wasn't able to walk right. So I kept watching this beetle and this beetle was sitting there literally just walking in circles for like five minutes, not able to do anything. And then eventually it messed up and flipped itself back over on its back. So at this point, I really began to think, okay, there's no hope for this beetle. It's, there's no way that it's going to be able to survive. Even if he does get back over, there's no way with his flaw that he's going to be able to make it in this world. Something else would eventually come along and kill it or I don't know. I just realized there was no hope for this beetle. So I revisited the idea of, should I just squash it and be done with it? I know some of you are like, who cares, it's just a beetle. And honestly, that's kind of how I was too. So let me go ahead and tie this all in. So eventually after some thought, there was nothing that could be done for the beetle. And the best thing I could do was just squish it and end it. So I ended up squishing it. So it really made me stop and think, how it's the same thing for God with us. 
You see, I had all the power in the world over that beetle's destiny. So just like me with that beetle, the same goes for God and his people. And it made me stop and think that God, a lot of times, is probably like I was with the beetle and just sitting here looking at us and seeing us make mistake after mistake after mistake and wondering, okay, when is it too much and when does he realize that there's no hope? You see, because our human minds tell us that if someone keeps making mistake after mistake after mistake or they're just headed down the wrong path, our instinct is to try and stop it. But you see, God gave us the freedom to make our own choices. So it made me think, okay, how often is God sitting there looking at us making the wrong choices and saying, when are they going to learn? Just like the beetle going around in circles, oftentimes us as humans keep running around in circles doing the same thing over and over again, getting complacent in life, and all that comes because we're not relying on God. It also made me think of the fact that God knows our heart and God knows whether or not we're ever going to accept Him. And unfortunately, because of the sin in our lives, one day death comes upon us all. So God might show you mercy time and time again, but at some point, it's like I was with the beetle, and he realizes that nothing can be done for that person. So I guess I'm saying, don't be like that beetle that keeps going around in circles. Don't keep running to the same empty things that are meaningless and aren't going to help you at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, when you're standing before God, do you think He cares about how much money you have or how big your house is, how popular you are? None of those things matter. God's saying, quit running to these empty things. Come to me. Because one day you'll stand face to face with Jesus and He's going to take into account the life that God gave you. But... One more thing to add to this story, I kid you not, it wasn't a minute after that that another beetle came out of nowhere and walked right up to my feet. And it didn't have any injuries, so in my mind I equated it to being someone that was following God versus the other beetle that was just living for itself, trying to rely solely on its own strength. But then this healthy beetle ended up flipping over as well. And I was like, oh great, am I going to have to squash this one too? But I showed mercy to this beetle to see if it would be able to recover from its mistake. And it's a good thing I did because then the beetle was able to flip itself over and keep on living life doing whatever beetles do. This is the first time I ever really studied beetles, so I'm not quite sure what they really do. But it made me think about how God shows mercy to some of us even when we do fall and make mistakes that he gives us a chance to right our wrongs. He still has hope for us and has a plan to use us. So I guess what I'm really equating this to is that God shows us mercy in order for us to learn from our mistakes and hopefully lead us back in the right direction. But unfortunately for some, at some point it's going to be too late. So I hope that this made some sense to y'all and y'all are able to look at your own life and draw a parallel to this story and hopefully my beetle story wasn't too weird for you guys it was a bit weird for me but i just find it awesome how god can teach you with something as small as beetles as irrelevant as beetles may seem to us as humans it's kind of funny that god was able to teach me something with them but anyways that's it for the lesson of the day guys take this lesson use it and apply it in your life don't just listen to these words that i've said but stop and seriously think about this lesson and how it relates to your life and your relationship with God. And let's all try to work on growing closer to God and developing that relationship. But that's it for this vlog, guys. Like always, go like up this video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already and tap that little bell to turn post notifications on. That way you'll be updated with all my new videos. And if you go down to the description box below, you'll see that I have all my social media accounts linked down there, as well as the link to my blog site for the World Race, zachtress.theworldrace.org. If you're curious to know more about World Race and hear more of my story, go click on that. And if you're feeling called by the Spirit to make a donation to my mission trip, you can donate from that website as well. I've still got a long ways to reaching my goals, so I need y'all's help through not only the funding, but prayer as well. 
prayer that I'll be able to reach this goal and be fully funded, and God will teach me so much more about life and love on this mission trip, and prayer that he will be able to use me to do great things for him and his kingdom, and pray that I'll be able to share the gospel with people that don't know it and need it, and just show them the love of Jesus Christ. Alright guys, I love you and God loves you. See you next time.